In this video series, I'm going to be showing you how to make your public facing app services private, secure, able to access your internal network resources, and also for people outside of your network to not be able to access it at all. Tune in. I believe in the light that shines and will never die. For us to do what we need to do for this tutorial and overarching demonstration, we're going to have to create an environment for everything to live in. Since we already have a demonstrations resource group, let's call this Demonstrations 2. We're going to put it in the same uh, region as previously. And now let's go into Demonstrations and let's go ahead and create a virtual network. Now this virtual network we're going to create here is the virtual network that we're going to use for all the activities as part of this overall lesson. So we're going to call it just a demo two. Seems good enough. We're going to keep it in the same region. I'm going to keep everything in this region. So here you can see that we have the choice of choosing between enabling a bastion um, and also a virtual network encryption. And then we also have a choice of specifying the firewall here, uh, but we're, we're not going to do any of that right now. So if we go over to the IP address section, um, you can see here that we can specify the subnets uh, that we're going to be using. So by default, this network has a stash 16, and I have a subnet that's a slash 24, so it has 256 addresses. And as a whole, we've got altogether 65,000, well, more than 65,000 addresses. So we can go next, and we just go ahead and let's create this uh, virtual network. So with that created, let's go back in and let's look at some of the settings. So the address space, we already know, basically, uh, you can use to extend the address space from the default slash 16 that we have here. So for example, you can add other address ranges into this and they become part of the overall VNet. And subsequently, you can create subnets from in, inside of these new um, address spaces that will also be able to navigate to other resources that you have inside of your VNet. Connected devices basically represent the devices that are connected to your network. So these would be the network interface cards for the most part. Those are all going to show up here. It's more for monitoring. There's pretty much nothing actionable that you can do here. Subnets, we already saw. This is where you can create your subnets. Basically, uh, this is the same default that's been there. As you can see, it's a slash 24, and it tells you how many I addresses are actually available to you. Some addresses are taken up by Azure. And if we go in here, um, here are some of the settings around the subnet. You can give it a name. You can specify the address range. You can specify whether you want it to be IP6 address or not. You can specify a NAT gateway, which gives a public IP for outbound traffic so that you can basically apply any traffic going out from your subnet to a whitelist at the client side. You also have to, the choice to apply a network security group uh, to this, this particular subnet that's being created. And finally, you can specify a route table that can be used to route traffic. And if you saw our previous video on transient routing, uh, you'll see how important route tables are to advanced networking inside of the Azure networking infrastructure. So go check that video out. So we'll cancel out of that. Bastions, uh, we already, again, did this in our previous video on transient routing. They basically allow you to connect to your in-network virtual machines through a browser. Um, that's the long and short of it in a more secure manner and in a more scalable manner. Now, can you do this with a VM? Yes. But VMs have limits on how many individuals can be signed into them at a given time. 
DDoS is a way to do distributed denial of service. Um, so you can enable that. It's a paid service. So there is a cost component to it. You have to specify the plan and you're good to go. The firewall basically provides a an internet uh, web firewall to the VNet so you can protect traffic coming in and out. The primary distinction between the firewalls and NSGs, and there are many differences, uh, but NSGs are scoped to the subnets that they are attached to, while firewalls apply to the entire VNet. Network Manager essentially provides you with a central management service for your virtual network resources. The DNS servers uh, provide you with really two ways of resolving names, either using Azure DNS, which is a default, or specifying an IP address there um, that will represent the IP address for the DNS server that you're planning to use. Peerings allow you to connect two virtual networks together so that they share the same address space or bet more a more accurate um, description is that so that traffic can be navigated back and forth between them uh, with no issue. Then we've got our properties, uh, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have locks, uh, which uh, we've talked about before. Watch some of the other videos. We have alerts, which allow you to create alert rules associated with things that happen on your network. You have metrics that's tied to that. Um, you can look at diagnostic settings. You can look at logs associated with your network. And if we go down to the automation part, you'll see that um, Microsoft now provides uh, some snippets that you can essentially copy and paste into scripts that you might have or might want to run. And then you have tasks, uh, which uh, we've all seen and know what to do. And then we have finally our, the ability to export templates. Um, this gives you the full um, ARM template, allows you to deploy directly to the cloud from here. Um, it allows you to visualize the template to see all the components involved. You can add it to a library of yours and you can download it and, and combine it with um, other resources uh, and scripts that you might have. Thanks for watching this first of several videos where we're going to be showing you how to make your app services, which are naturally public, private. In this first step, we create a virtual network. In our next video, we're going to be showing you how to create a virtual machine and put it in that network. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more technology-focused content for the leaders of tomorrow.